for joining us again at C. Joe's Vault, where we explore a lifetime of collecting pop culture memorabilia such as comic books, movie and TV items, bubblegum cards, and so much more. This time around, we're going to be checking out my collection of Lon Chaney Sr. Photo Play Editions. Chaney, of course, being the grandfather of the American horror movie and the originator of a lot of effects makeup that Hollywood used decades after his passing. Now, photo play editions are books that come out at the same time as the movie, and usually on the dust jackets will have either a photo or a painting from the film. The interior often also has some black and white stills. So the very first Lon Chaney photo play edition was The Miracle Man, released by Paramount Pictures on August 29th of 1919. Chaney plays a character called the Frog, a contortionist who teams up with two other seedy characters to flee some locals. The success of the film gave a boost to the careers of not only Chaney himself, but also co-stars Thomas Megan and Betty Compson. Sadly, the film is lost to us, like so many other silent films, save for two short scenes that were used in Movie Memories, a short newsreel from the 1930s. Grossup and Dunlap, the pioneers of American photoplay editions, published The Miracle Man's release with the printing of the book, featured on this dust jacket, a full bleed color photo of Dowling as the Patriarch and Betty Compson as her role as Rose. One would think that this was the only still sent to the various publishers by Paramount's marketing team, as this image is used for all three of the UK photo plays published by Harder and Stoughton, as well as the Digest version published in Spain. Only the American and Spanish editions, however, feature interior stills. The second film to get it, Lon Chaney Photo Play Edition, comes from us from the Charles Renard Company out of New York. Renard wasn't nearly as prolific in producing photo plays as Grosset and Dunlap, but they did give us two Chaney installments as part of their popular classics library series. The first was the tie-in to Paramount's 1920 release of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. The film was released at the beginning of April and Chaney portrays not one, but two characters in the film, the beggar Blind Pew and Mary the Pirate the latter of which is prominently displayed on the front cover of the DJ. This book includes 16 stills from the film, including some of Chaney in both character makeup. This particular version of the movie does boast another actor who went down in history, albeit not nearly as memorable as Chaney for his makeup roles. The character of Long John Silver is portrayed by none other than Charles Ogle, who you may know as the monster from Thomas Edison's 1910 short film Frankenstein. Happily, Ogle can also be seen in some of the interior stills as well. Less than a year later, moviegoers would get their next helping of Lon Chaney's amazing acting in a new film called Outside the Law. In this universal film, written and directed by none other than Todd Browning, who also did Freaks and Bela Lugosi's Dracula, Chaney once again doubles up on roles playing both gangster Black Mike Silva and Ah Wing, his first portrayal of an Asian character. For avid readers, however, they would unfortunately have to wait until 1926 for a small digest published by Jacobson Hodgson to hit the bookstore shelves. This was part of a large series of movie tie-ins that company produced, which include five Cheney titles. This particular edition includes a great cover of Cheney emerging from behind the curtain as he glares at his co-star, Priscilla Dean. The book is more desirable to collectors as it also features interior stills. Of the eight films Cheney appeared in, in 1922, only two were graced with photo play editions, Oliver Twist and Quincy Adams Sawyer. Shadows, however, while not seemingly spawning a photo play edition, did get a tie in in the way of a rare piece of sheet music for a song entitled Ching Ching Chinaman, the original title of the story by William Daniel Steele, from which the movie is based, and features a great shot of Cheney in full makeup as the character of Yen Sing. Of the two aforementioned photo plays that did, in fact, come out, First National's Oliver Twist is the second of the two Chaney tie-ins published by Renault after their earlier Treasure Island. The front DJ features two images of the titular character portrayed by a young Jackie Coogan, and on the back, a scene with Coogan and others at a table alongside Chaney's Fagan. The inside of this one is graced with no less than 20 stills from the film, including a great close-up shot of Chaney in makeup. The book's age, it being a Chaney photoplay, and the fact that it's a very famous novel by Charles Dickens makes this a rather difficult book to come by. 
Released at the beginning of December, about five weeks after Oliver Twist, Metro Pictures put out Quincy Adams Sawyer, and with it came Grosset and Dunlap's photoplay edition of the same name, based on the novel by Charles Felton Piggin. The story revolves around Attorney Sawyer, played by John Bauer, and his attempt to help a widow settle her husband's estate. Cheney plays shifty lawyer Obadiah Stroud, who is suspected of withholding some of the widow's bonds. Trouble develops as the widow becomes romantically interested in Sawyer, but Sawyer and Cheney Stroud are both interested in the widow's blind daughter. These love triangles were a staple in films of the time period, and there is no exception. The cast also includes Blanche Sweet, Barbara Lamar, and Silver Screen's first Tarzan, Elmo Lincoln, as Abner Stiles, the local blacksmith, who actually appears on the cover of the DJ in a street scene, and he was about to punch Bowers Sawyer. There are several interior stills, including a couple of great shots of the Man of a Thousand Faces. One of Lon Chaney Sr.'s most famous characters he ever played, of course, was Quasimodo in Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, brought to us in photoplay edition, at least here in the States, by the Ale Burt Company. One of the more common ones, but still really nice to have anyway. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, the Reader's Library Publishing Company released a tie-in to the film, albeit a weak one. Initially, the DJ featured artwork of the deformed Bellringer, which looks nothing like Cheney. There is a blurb on the front cover which states Film Edition, with the ninth printing of the book. The publisher changed the artwork slightly, and Universal Studios is now mentioned on the front. A much more difficult-to-find variant comes from the UK publisher J.M. Dent & Sons, which is slightly larger than the Reader's Library edition and sports a black and white photo of the Notre Dame Cathedral on the front with a Universal Pictures credit. The spine has an image of Quasimodo hanging from a bell, which could be argued looks like Cheney. Sadly, there are no interior photos on this one. There is an oddity from Spain, which you see here, which, if not for the discernible eye, would go all but unnoticed. It's this very small book which had a nice photo of Cheney from the trap on the cover. The interior, however, features a synopsis of the film and some stills. The rarest photo play from the title, actually probably one of the ten rarest photo plays of all, is this edition put out by George D. Schwartz and Company. This extremely hard to find book has a great full color scene from the film on the front of the DJ and four interior stills. What makes this particular edition unique, besides its rarity, is that it is not, in fact, Victor Hugo's novel, but instead a novelization of the film's actual screenplay. In November of the following year, MGM finally released the very first film they actually produced. Juan Chaney stars in He Who Gets Slapped as Paul Beaumont, a scientist who is swindled out of his discoveries by his benefactor, Baron Rignog, played by Mark McDermott who is aided by Cheney's on-screen wife, played by Ruth King. They both slap Cheney in the face and walk out the door. Cheney's jilted scientist then retreats into the persona of He, a clown who is repeatedly slapped by the other members of the circus troupe he has joined for saying outrageous things. Norma Shearer and John Gilbert join the cast as fellow circus performers who, of course, fall in love. The drama builds as Cheney falls in love with Shearer's Crisella, then Baron returns and He falls in love with Crisella. Evidently, Crisella is very lovable. The film climaxes in a showdown between Cheney, the Baron, Crisella's father, and a rather hungry MGM mascot. Cheney is stabbed during the melee, but forces himself to go back out to the big top to finish his performance and eventually dies in front of the audience. G&D released the American photo play seen here with a full-color scene of Cheney in full clown makeup as Norma Shearer's Crisella sews on a cloth heart to his chest. The interior of the book posts some great shots of the film, making this a beautiful addition to anyone's collection. For whatever reason, England seems to have missed the boat on producing a photo play for this hit film. But there was one done in digest form in France by La Brerie Boudinaire. The book features a very nice artwork cover of he, surrounded by circus horses being ridden by Crisella, and three photos grace its interior. While I don't have it yet, there is one done in Spain uh, the Library of Great Films decided to jump on the bandwagon by putting out a digest photo play of their own. Their version of He Who Gets Slapped is part of their weekly film series and has a full cover photo of Cheney's Unforgettable Clown. Lon Cheney frightened audiences all over the world with his most iconic makeup 
as everyone's favorite, the fallen patron of the arts, the Phantom of the Opera. For this film, we have some pretty amazing photoplay editions from around the world. To begin with, G&D produced their version of Gaston LaRue's famous novel with beautiful wraparound artwork on the DJ, which also mentions the Universal film and has the distinction of being the very first photoplay to mention Lon Chaney by name. The interior features two double-page paintings and four stills from the movie. Chaney is not pictured on the dust jacket, but can be seen, although not very clearly, in two of the stills. One unmasked and barely distinguishable, and one in the full mask. Universal wanted to keep the master's makeup design a secret, so not only can you not see him in the book, but none of the movie paper reveals Eric's distorted face either. Spain gave us a Phantom of the Opera photo play in their library of great films in another edition of Weekly Films Novels. The cover features a photo of the Phantom looming over the three members of the cast, but alas, his face is conveniently out of frame. Several photos adorn the interior pages, but again, no clear shot of the unmasked villain. So let's move on to the UK, where they offered not one, but two great examples of the seminal classic. The first, and more common of the two, was put out by Reader's Library, whose DJ does show the Phantom in full mask, or at least the skull mask, at the top of the stairs glaring at Norman Carey and Mary Philbin. There are no interior photos, but that's okay because the publisher decided to break tradition and put a beautiful photo of the unmasked Eric confronting Philbin's Christine on the back of the DJ. England's other offering came from publisher Hutchinson & Company. I can't stress enough on how rare this item is or how beautiful. Also, don't want to talk about how much I paid for the bloody thing. The front of the DJ has a large shot of Philbin with a vignette of the Phantom of the Opera skull mask. The cover really pops thanks to the solid red background. Eight interior stills make this version even more desirable, considering two feature shots of the unmasked Eric. The final entry into this particular arena comes from France by way of a two-volume adaptation in large pulp format. These were published by the Society Editions and the publications that are both filled with many photos from the movie. And while one offers up a cover of Philbin and Carey sharing a kiss, the other one has an amazing shot of the unmasked Phantom himself. 1926 brought his photo place to three more Cheney vehicles. The first, released on January 11th, was the Blackbird. In it, Cheney plays Dan Tate, the title character who is a well-known criminal vying for the attention of the attractive Fifi Lorraine, played by Rene Adore. To throw people off, Cheney masquerades as his own brother, the pious bishop who everybody adores. Cheney's performance in this is magnificent and further illustrates his dedication to the craft as he contorts his body every time he is on screen as the misshapen bishop. By now, Jacobson Hodgkinson was in full swing with their line of movie tie-in digests, and having released the aforementioned Outside the Law, they also put out one for this newest theatrical release. Although it was published under the title The Mockingbird, written by Todd Browning, who also directed the film. As is customary with this line, interior photos are included, and the front cover features that famous shot of Cheney holding a cigarette wearing that character's trademark scally cap. The back cover is intriguing in that there are six photos of Cheney from different films the company didn't bother doing tie-ins to. It's kind of unfortunate that some of the titles were never covered in photo plays, at least not in the American market, such as The Monster, the 1925 version of The Unholy Three, and The Tower of Lies. We also, once again, get an addition from Bibliaca Films with a similar front cover, and of course interior stills, shown here. In June of 28, MGM gave us the next Browning-Cheney collaboration with Road to Mandalay. Cheney's character, Singapore Joe, is a partially blinded criminal boat captain who fawns over his unsuspecting daughter who he abandoned as a child, and who is now being raised by Joe's brother, Father James. The American photo play is yet another Jacobson Hodgkinson digest, the third to focus on a Cheney film. A great full color scene from the film adorns the front cover with Cheney and co stars Lois Moran and Owen Moore. Many photos grace both the interior pages as well as the back cover. There is also an extremely rare piece from the land down under. The Amalgamated Publishing Company had a series of small booklets under the title Movie Stories Published Weekly. Oddly, the cover doesn't mention Cheney, but instead credits Lois Moran and Owen Moore with an illustration of the two from the film. 
This 45-page Australian rarity does include a page of credits and photos inside. Tell it to the Marines is not only first half of the 19th century idiom, tell it to the Marines because the sailors won't believe you, which refers to a person speaking who was probably lying, but it is also the title of our next entry, which just happens to be Cheney's biggest box office smash, making over a million and a half dollars at the box office. Jacobs and Hodgkinson was clearly on a roll here as they produced the tie-in to this film as well. As can be expected, Cheney graces the cover as the unforgettable Sergeant O'Hara, and the book is complete with stills within as well as the back cover. As big as this film was, it's surprising that nobody else published any kind of photoplay edition in conjunction with its release. Another triple shot of photoplays were released in 1927, albeit from different countries. On March 26th, MGM released Mr. Wu, which once again teamed Cheney up with the Blackbird co-star René Adri. The film, based on the 1913 play by Henry Maurice Vernon and Harold Owen, gives us a revenge story where Cheney portrays two generational characters, grandfather and grandson. Louise Dresser, Holmes Herbert, Ralph Forbes, Gertrude Olmsted, and Anna Mae Wong round out the great cast. The A.L. Burt Company steps up to the plate and hits it out of the park with their edition featuring a credited Cheney in full Asian makeup from one of the film scenes, and of course some great interior stills. Perhaps American publishers felt the plot of the unknown was a bit too garish for their readers, so they left it up to the British peers to take on the task of releasing the photoplay. The London Book Company wasn't so squeamish. They were perfectly fine publishing a story about a criminal, Cheney, born with a double thumb on one hand who infiltrates a circus by strapping his arms to his torso and hiding under the facade of an armless performer who does things like shoot guns with his feet. He falls for a female performer who has an aversion to men with arms. No, I didn't make this up. This is actually the plot. The circus strongman also has feelings for the girl, and thus the obligatory love triangle ensues. Cheney's Anslow the Armless decides to have his arms amputated, fearing his beloved will discover his ruse, but to his dismay, the arm-fearing female, played by newcomer Joan Crawford of all people, falls for the guy with the biggest arms around. Wow. At any rate, the photo plate does feature a great front painting of Cheney and Crawford, while the back features a second painting of our star. Interior photos and the fact that there was nothing done here in the States make this one very desirable to collectors. London After Midnight is arguably one of the most famous lost films of the silent era. Cheney creates another iconic makeup as his alleged vampire in the story, while also playing the role of Professor Edward Burke. As we may never see the film, we do have two photo plays from which we can draw from of what the movie may have been like. The American edition, published by the stalwarts G&D, features an amazing image of Cheney in full vampire makeup, holding a lantern while two women look on in horror. Lon Cheney is appropriately credited as the star of the newest MGM vehicle, while several interior stills give us a small glimpse of this lost piece of cinematic history. The British version is a bit less attractive with stylistic wraparound artwork on the DJ, but does mention the studio and Cheney by name. Interior photos redeemed in non-movie cover art, but the scarcity of this particular edition still holds it in high demand. Tripling its budget at the box office wasn't enough, apparently, for a photoplay edition of Laugh Clown Laugh from either American or England, but Spain did release one by the way of their Bibliotheca Films line. A great photo cover from the film, interior photos are there, and again, whenever there is no American version, these foreign numbers become very sought after. Sadly, the only thing released here in the States from this film about a clown involved in a love triangle, hmm, that sounds familiar, is the very common piece of sheet music to the title song, which was actually a very big hit. Where East is East is the last silent film of Cheney's that we get any kind of photo play from, as there are none done from Thunder. Jacobson Hodgkinson, who now simply known as Jacobson, gives us their last and scarcest Cheney tie-in, which features a great cover image from the Todd Browning film, along with interior stills. There's also this French Digest, which gives us another great cover image as well. Our final entry into this crazy rule of photo plays came in 1930, which brought us an ailing Lon Chaney, who was offered to do a sound film which would help usher in a new whole era of Hollywood. Chaney chose to remake The Unholy Three, from five years earlier, reprising his dual roles as ventriloquist Mr. Echo and Mrs. O'Grady. We finally get to hear the master's thespian speak, but it was too little too late, 
as he would soon succumb to throat cancer. A.L. Burt fortunately kicked in a printing of the 1917 novel as a photoplay edition with a great photo of the three titular villains on the cover. This, with interior photos, would sadly be the end of the Lon Chaney photoplay run, his films, and, unfortunately, his life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of C. Joe's Vault and had a good time checking out my collection of Lon Chaney Sr. photoplay editions. Be sure to come by next time. And in the meantime, check the, uh, you know, the like button, the subscribe, leave comments, all that other fun stuff. See you soon.